Okay, on the bench, out of a 2011 Chevy Camaro with a 3.6, we have the rear-wheel drive six-speed transmission called the 6L50. And we have 140,000 miles on the clock. So what's going on with this is I got a call from my one of my wholesale accounts that the uh, his one of his regulars had the car towed to him because at some point the car had stopped moving but he says hey you know what i i started it up i moved it around i pulled it around back and it seems to be driving and i says well, you know what let it run for 15 20 minutes and then go out and see what happens and sure enough he calls him back and he says up oh, you were right the car absolutely does not move i gotta shut it off now and he said i had to shut it off and let it sit to, to get into a parking spot so that is the classic sign of what a clogged filter uh, I did not have the pan down yet uh, to drain this transmission but I just took the plug out of the side which is the fill I'm going to show you this is a little different than your typical 6L80 that you would find actually I have one of those here to do also in uh, like a Chevy Suburban or a Chevy Tahoe um, that has a, a filler tube boot with a filler tube and a dipstick. This does not. This, you have to put it on the lift to check the fluid. It has the fill on the side and then the, and then the check plug in, in the pan, in the high spot of the pan, which I'll show you when we uh, flip this over to take the pan down. So I didn't have the pan down on this yet, but we had it towed in because there's no way we would have made it here. And sure enough, we had it out in the front. We were pulling, we pulled it around back, and the thing was whining like crazy. So that filter is restricting the oil from getting into the pump, and the noise that you're actually hearing is the pump starving for oil. And then, you know, by the time we got it in just around the, uh, we got to just drive onto the street, go around to the back of the building where we have two more lifts. And that was it we kind of just coasted into the bay so this this is bad so we'll see what we find when we tear it down we're going to do that tomorrow morning because it's uh, the end of the day after hours and i am totally beat because it is beyond busy here and it actually got to the point where to try to to uh take a little pressure off of me is what i did was i bought some cords and I overhauled some cores, like I bought the popular ones, uh, like an 09 and up 4 Ross 70 W, uh, 2005 to 2008, and that goes by the EPC solenoid, 2005 to 2008 4 Ross 70 W, and a 62 TE with a 3.6. All right, the 62 TEs also have the, have the 3 8 and a 4 0, but they have the crank sensor and a bell housing. The most common one we see is the 3.6, so I bought a core. And I built them and put them on a the shelf, and hopefully, you know, and the, the, take a little pressure off of me, but I gotta tell you, as fast as I build them, the transmissions are gone, so they all went. The 62 TE, the 2000, here's the one we just got in, this is the 09 and up. 4L70W and the 05 and the 05 to 08 uh, was about three days ago. So as fast as I build these things, uh, now I got three more to put back in stock when I have time. But I have the 6L50, I have a 6L80, a TF81SC out of a Land Rover. I got a U760 coming out of a uh, a Rav4. I got a couple of 4T65Es here. I got a couple of Hondas here. It is just crazy non-stop and we've been this year will be we'll be celebrating our 54th year in business and my dad really built up a great reputation when he was active from 1967 until 2012 when he passed away but he was always uh uh, built a business on, uh, didn't really advertise much, but we always did a ton of wholesale. But even when the retail people came in, uh, what he would always, he was always very honest with the people because at that time there were transmission shops all, all over the place. So if somebody came in 
uh, like with the Chevy when it had the, the turbo hydromatic 350 and it worked on vacuum or even a C4 that worked on vacuum. He would drive the car and he can tell what's going on and if it was a bad vacuum line, he would pop the hood and if it was broken up there at the carburetor, he'd put a piece on and send him on his way and not even charge him anything. And uh, that's how we still work today. I mean, nothing works on vacuum, but if someone comes in with a bad sensor, we're gonna change the sensor versus, you know, doing a tranny. But that's how we built the business uh, from scratch from 1967. And he was able to drive the car a certain way. And, and uh, for instance, on a C4, a car with a C4 that didn't shift, and it was a vacuum problem, the way you can tell is you would drive the car, and then you would put it manual second, it would shift to manual second, and then you would put the car into drive. And if it stayed in second, you had a vacuum problem. If it shifted back down to first, you had a governor or valve body problem. So that's how you can tell, and, and um, you know, he just did what needed to be done, and even if it was a simple adjustment or vacuum line, and, and sent him on his way, and, and we've been in this area for, 54 years and uh, it's uh, very, very busy. You know, uh, uh, thank God for that though. So not to get off subject, just wanted to ramble a little bit. Um, all right, so the 6L50, this is actually the first 6L50 I'm tearing down. I do a ton of 6L80s, but um, first thing when I saw the bell housing kind of remind me of the 5L40E out of the Cadillac. Um, that I recently did. So we're gonna tear this thing down tomorrow. I got my that was a TF80 pump. I got my big pliers ready for the huge O snap ring in there. Uh, the special sockets ready for the Tecum. And this is gonna get your typical banner kit. We're gonna check the pump, upgrade the pump. It's gonna get a brand new Tecum. I'm gonna program that with my laptop and uh, do it up real nice. All right, so we're dealing with the clock screen, no movement. You know, normally when you're dealing with a clock screen, sometimes you gotta run the car 15, 20 minutes. This thing's gonna be running maybe five minutes. So I'm curious to see what the pan looks like when we get the pan down. I did not take the pan down yet because this is where you fill the fluid and the check is under here. So something like this with this plug, these come in the kits also to change it. You pop up this cap that locks it in place. And then you can just take the plier and, and pull it out. And that's what it looks like. So when you push it down, uh, it's locked like that. So this uh, this comes in the this comes in the in all the kits, whether it takes or not, even the the get a 6L80 kit, this will come in there. It's probably all the same kits anyway. They probably fit everything. So, I'll probably leave this thing just turned over, maybe. Eh, you know what, I'll leave it like this. And we're gonna tear this down tomorrow morning. Okay? So, with that, I'll also, just one more thing. Um, one thing that we forgot to do, because um, uh, sometimes it happens, because the manager thought that that uh, the lead mechanic, uh, his name is Gary also, thought he might have scanned it, and I thought Bill scanned it, and I think Gary might have thought that I scanned it, and nobody scanned it. So I don't remember the check engine light being on though, but that one kind of got through the cracks because we were just, it's just, you know, it's not nonstop, very, very busy. Uh, so, I can't tell you if there's any codes present or not. The only thing I can tell you is we're dealing with a 100% clog filter. All right, so with that, I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow morning, and we're gonna open this up and see what we find, 6L50. All right, back with you this morning. So I'm gonna start tearing this down. First thing I wanna do is just get the flange off of the back here. That is a 30 millimeter. All right, it, it, it was peened over, so I just got a hammer, got in there uh, with the with the uh, with my bushing splitter here, and unpeened the nuts, so now it should come right off.
let's get the extension housing off as well. Thirteen. Seal for the extension housing. And then the rear seal we're going to change. And you got a bearing in here instead of that. Bearing right on the output shaft here. So just make sure that's nice and smooth. Okay. Where you check the fluid here. You fill it from the side and you check it from here. I mean, I think it doesn't smell too good. I'll we'll see what this pan looks like. Bunch of metal over here, smells real bad, burnt out. And here is, I guess you call it the standpipe for the fluid level. bunch of crap all along here. sleeve and then we need the special uh, Torx Plus I think this is a 10 yes and there's six bolts here. Okay, so this has 
140,000 miles on if no seals. And you know, that's what they should look like. When you get those ones that are all torn up, those are what I like to call the in, inferior ones. Okay. All right, now. Just gonna put two bolts back in here temporarily. This filter here, I'm looking inside, it's all matted down, but 100% this filter was clogged. for the torque converter. Now I'm going to zip these bell housing bolts out, 13 millimeter. I'm sorry, I mean a pump bolt. Well, bell housing, yeah, bell, bell housing. So here's the pump, we're going to take this out apart. After the transmission down. Here's the 3 5 reverse 1 2 3 4 clutch drum. Okay. 4 5 6 clutches are burnt for sure. You can see by the outside of the drum here. We'll open up those. And here's the clutch hub. Got a bearing here. And a, and a like a bearing race here. All right, now we got another clutch up here. All right, bearing in here, bearing on this side, and one more. And you got a bearing that actually goes on here like that. But we'll just leave it here. 
everything out. All right, now it's snap break time. All right, so let's roll this. All right, so let's see if I can at least start this. And get a, a one side out. All right. It, it's going to come out. Right, you know what, let me reposition, I'll get more down in there so you can hopefully see me get the snap ring out. Give me one second. All right, let's try this again. squeeze this and get one side out because the back part of the snap ring there we go okay we got it this one's not uh Well, that is, I don't think it is anyway, it's like this. Okay. Set a support. Check all that. Got the buttons there. I might as well just get the rest of the gear train out here. here for the case. Right. And is stripped. Alright, so let me get organized here and pretty much we're gonna take a look at the clutches, open up the pump, take a look at the valve body. Alright, so I will be back in a few minutes. All right, let's take a look at some of these clutches first. We got the 3 5 reverse. And remember, you got to watch the, the opening of the snap ring has to go in that blind spline on the 3 5 reverse and the 1 2 3. Okay, not too bad. But I have a banner kit coming. Okay, there's the apply for that. Now, let's see. Okay, and we got the one, two, three, four. Okay, these are no good. Burned up. Okay. All right, here we got the low reverse. Let's check these out. All right, we also have a 
sprig in here. All right, yeah, these aren't the greatest either. A little dark. Check out the two six clutch. Now these are one sided. Again, this is my first six L fifty. That I did, you know, six L eighties. Forget it. And I got, like I said, I got another one here to do. All right, so we got one sided frictions for the two six. get the banner kit. The banner kit comes with the uh, overhaul kit, all the clutches, and also the pistons, because we have some molded pistons on these 6L80s. Okay, all right, now we're going to look at the 456 clutch. All right, just give me one second. I will be right back. All right, next we're going to take a look at the 456 clutch. So let's remove Planet, sun gear. Right now, I'm going to have a washer. <coughs> it's on and there's also a barrel. This side, this shot looks like I'm going to need clutches and steels. Sampling looks good. These are also one sided. <clears throat> so we have the wave and the pressure plate. And then these are no good. So let's get all the eight millimeter bolts out. This one. Okay, this is nice. All right, I'm going to take a look at the pressure regulator. All right, centering ring. Bad, got another ring. All right. Washer and the pump over. Okay. All right, there's the spring. It's like spring.
seals the slide itself looks good. Uh, and we got the pivot pin and spring. And we get rid of the old. You got a snap ring in here to come out for the front seal to come out. Valve body. There is your <clears throat> position switch or range sensor. Of course, your Tecum. Here are your speed sensors. We got a couple of seals here that we change. The oldest comes in the kit. These seals here. And on the <clears throat> valve body, I get the Sonics O ring end plug kit. version of the 6080 then you got a bearing in here and I'm going to clean all this up all this red dusty crap all right that's really about it on this 11 Chevy Camaro with the 6L50 uh, clock screen now I'm not really seeing much in way of transmission other than the burn clutches which is would be a result of a clock screen so chances are something happened to the converter on this uh, came apart maybe the clutch came apart or something and screen was clogged okay so I am in the middle of rebuilding the 6L50 and there's a couple of things that I wanted to show you on the when we were tearing it down and I completely forgot so I want to show you guys now. I got pretty much everything ready to go. The only thing I'm waiting for is my uh, Tecum uh, to come from the Transstar. I'm getting a new one, uh, AC Delco, then I program it, and the filter. But pretty much everything else is done. I can start putting this together. But I wanted to show you the pressure regulator valve out of this because it's worn out. And I wanted to show you the type of rings that are used because uh, these are non-rotational rings and sometimes they got a tab sticking out of the side but these are actually inside uh, tabs on the ring. So I wanted to just show you what those look like. I meant to do that again on the tear down and I completely forgot. Uh, and then just a quick uh, reference uh, with the valve body. I can show you how to identify uh, the valve bodies through um, uh, just by looking at it. I wanted to actually show you that as well. All right, so let me just kind of zoom in here on this stuff. Okay, all right, so first I wanted to show you the pressure regulator valve. I just used my last Transco valve, but you've seen those before. And I have another pack coming uh, tonight at my night delivery because I have a 6L80 to do. But here is the pressure regulator valve. Here is the spring. Also, that gets changed, but take a look at the valve. You can see it's all discolored here, and this valve is way worn out. So every rebuild gets a valve and this I think had 140,000 miles on it, I believe so this is pretty bad 
This is here. See how shiny it is? It's all worn down. This color is the, the color is totally gone. So that valve is way worn out. And I wanted to show you the rings that are used. See, it has the inside tabs instead of like the little notches coming out. So the rings can't rotate. Okay. Let me back out a little bit. All right, so that's those that I wanted to show you again on the teardown, so that's good. And also, valve body is rebuilt uh, with uh, the Sonics uh, end plugs with the O-rings on them. Okay, so we're going to look at this here. I got the speed sensor wire in the way. So if you can see here, we have A, B, C, and D. And the B, now if you look at the A, look at the C, and the B is kind of ground down. So this is a 6L50 valve body. 6L80 valve body, the C would be ground down. And more than likely 6L90, the D would be ground down. And probably 6L45, the A would be. So the B is ground down. So just by looking at it, that is how you tell that it is a 6L50 valve body. So I wanted to show you that as well. All right, and just to recap, uh, 2011 Chevy Camaro with a 3.6, 6L50 trans. Uh, the screen uh, was clogged, so this thing basically did not move very well at all. Even cold, it was, it was bad. And we found some of the clutches no good. So I got my banner kit with my pistons. And just to show you, uh, it takes four pistons, and these are the ones that I used in the kit, that came in the kit, that's all I will use, all OE stuff for the molded pistons. And this is the, the Transgo. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the Transstar's part number for the valve. And you can do three transmissions with this, and I just used my last one, so I had to order another kit. All right, so that is it for this. I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.